Hi, my name is Mr. Griotis, and today I'm going to show you how to use a portable drill in a safe manner. Now some of you might think, why do you even need a portable drill? If you need to drill a hole, why not use the drill press? Well, sometimes we need to drill a hole in an object, and we can't fit it underneath the drill press. Therefore, we need to bring the portable drill to the object. Today I'm going to go through a couple safety rules with you, and after watching this video, you should know how to safely use this tool. The first safety rule that I have for you today is to operate only with the instructor's permission and after you've received instruction. By watching this safety video, you're gaining knowledge of how to use this tool in a safe manner. Rule number two, remove jewelry, eliminate loose clothing, and confine long hair. A couple moments ago, I removed my watch. You want to make sure you remove any bracelets, any rings, any necklaces, or any jewelry that could possibly get caught in this machine. Eliminate loose clothing. You want to make sure that your sleeves are rolled up. If you have a jacket on, make sure you take your jacket off. Uh, if you have any excessive clothing on, maybe you have a hoodie on and you have a t-shirt on underneath, you want to remove your hoodie because that could be excessively baggy and the drawstrings might get caught in the machine. You also want to confine long hair. What that means is both males and females, if you have hair that's below the shoulder, you want to make sure that hair is tied back with the hair tie. Rule number three, always use proper eye protection. You always want to make sure you have on safety glasses anytime you're doing anything in the lab. Rule number four, when changing bits, make sure the drill is unplugged. You never want to change a drill bit with it plugged in because if an accident ever occurred and someone accidentally hit the trigger, then the bit could cut your hand. So you want to make sure it's unplugged, and then you remove the bit. Same with installing a bit. Make sure it's unplugged, install your bit, and then plug it in. Rule number five, remove the chuck key before using the drill. This is the chuck key. The chuck key is used to take bits in and out of the drill. The drill that I'm using today does not use a chuck key. However, if you are using a drill that has a chuck key, you want to make sure that it's removed before you operate the tool. Rule number six, always secure your work with a vise or clamp. Do not drill into the vise. This is a vise. The vise is used to hold the material in place so that I can keep my hands at a safe distance and so that the material does not move when I drill into it. You'll notice that I put the material at the top of the vise. You always want to put your material at the top of the vise. The bottom of the vise has a metal rod. You don't want to drill into that metal rod. Therefore, always clamp your material in a vise at the top of the vise. You always want to make sure that you mark your material with a pencil before you drill your hole. Rule 
Rule number seven. When drilling, hold the drill firmly with two hands. Keep your hands clear of the chuck and the drill bit. What that means is when you're using this tool, you always want to keep both hands at the back of the tool. One hand will be on the trigger, the other hand will be applying pressure on the back. You never want to keep your hands near the chuck or the drill bit. If you accidentally hit the trigger, you could cut yourself with these two areas of this tool. So you always want to make sure your hands are at the back of the tool when you go to use it. Once it's come to a complete stop, then you can put it on the table. Rule number eight. Do not touch bits after drilling as they can be hot from the drilling process. The bit can be hot after drilling because of friction. So you want to make sure you don't touch the bit because you could get burned. Rule number nine. Do not play with the trigger on the drill. It is not a toy. Students will occasionally want to pull on the trigger. Once again, this is a tool, not a toy. Do not play with the trigger. Rule number 10. Make sure the power cord is not a tripping hazard to yourself or others. You'll notice that instead of having the power cord on the ground today, I have the excess power cord on the table with me. That means that not only will I not trip on the power cord while I'm working, but others in the room will not trip on the power cord as well. If you follow the 10 safety rules that I went over with you today, then you will operate this tool in a safe manner. Thank you for your time.